This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Hey, I'm Primitive Tim, and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys two methods of finding snakes. And um, these are considered the more difficult ways because you have to be a lot more attentive and you need to really know your snakes and what you're looking for. So join me in these beautiful woods and let's find some snakes. Now one thing I like about hiking is sometimes you find things they don't really expect to find. And so like, I don't know if you guys can see that back there, but um, there's an armadillo. So sometimes you see armadillos, deer, pigs, you might see a bobcat. Um, you never know what you're gonna see when you're hiking. And so that's always kind of a fun thing about hiking is even though it's not real productive for finding snakes, you can find kind of a weird variety of different animals. So that armadillo was pretty cool, and he was just rooting around, doing his thing. Now here in Florida, where it's generally too hot for snakes, any of the snakes that are active during the day are gonna be active either in the morning or in the evening. Now if it's a fall or spring day where it's cool in the morning and it warms up during the day, what you can do is find a place where snakes will be um, hibernating or brumating. So they're going to be in these, usually in like crevices or in burrows. And so if you know where there's a bunch of burrows or crevices for them to, to brumate in, you can go there in the spring or the fall and they will actually come out just to the mouth of them to bask in the sun, even if it's still in the 60s. So we're going to let this little guy go, but um, really fun find. These guys are always a lot of fun. Unfortunately, they're venomous and uh, I don't like to mess with venomous snakes, especially when I'm out in the woods all alone. Seems like a bad idea. Check out this tiny little creature right here. This has got to be the cutest little pygmy rattlesnake I've ever seen. He is absolutely tiny. All right, so the cool thing here is I just hiked him up. He was laying on the road, just crossing. And so what's so interesting about this one is as, as a juvenile like this, as a little baby, he's got a caudal lure. I love finding baby animals. And here it is, late summer. So all these all these animals that were um, that were born during the summer, they're all out. They're out in full force. They haven't been eaten up by um, a lot of the predators. So there's still a lot of cool little guys like this out here, and it's just so fun to find these. Now another great place to look for snakes is on these boardwalks. They cut straight through habitat, and um, you're basically able to have a clear path through the habitat. So all along the edge in here. This is all really thick, and then of course we have this clearing. So snakes will actually come out to the edge of that thick area along the boardwalk and bask. And so if we can find them right there, that's another great way to find some snakes. So when I hit these real thick areas, I just keep an eye, just look, look real hard and take your time. It's important to go nice and slow and just look at every little spot. And you're looking for places that are well protected, but still kind of open. And so these are gonna be ideal for snakes to bask in because they'll have that protection and they'll be able to get some sunlight as well. So both sides of the boardwalk would be fine. Oh, ha, here we go. No joke, I'm not even gonna cut because we got a pygmy rattlesnake right here. We're gonna leave him as is. Hopefully we haven't disturbed him too much. I know it scare away to f a few frogs. Those frogs are gonna come back. Apparently those frogs have no idea this guy's right here waiting to chow down on him. So I'm gonna hop back up onto the boardwalk. I just love it when a snake like that is so cooperative. It's totally relying on its camouflage. And look at him, he's still sitting back there. So he's relying on his camouflage, thinking if I just sit here, wait this guy out, He's not gonna harass me. I'm gonna be able to go on my way in peace. So that's what I'm gonna let him do. And um, because I, whenever a snake is willing to sit still and behave for me, I'm always gonna leave it alone. Now, when I hit a spot in the trail that opens up like this, I always stop at the opening and I just kind of look around. I scan the perimeter, um, all this water down below. I'll scan the edge of that, see what's going on. And in this case, it's a good thing I did because at the very end 
of this boardwalk is a black racer. It's literally just sitting there. I hate to say it, but I don't really have an explanation exactly for why that snake is sitting there. Now it could be that the wood is just the right temperature that the snake wants to be, so it's sitting on there. It's coiled up right there. Um, I doubt he's waiting for prey because uh, that just doesn't seem like a very likely place for him. Um, it's just weird. The weird things that snakes do. Now our second method of finding snakes, or really a lot of creatures, is by shining. Now basically all you do is you take a really powerful light, like my headlamp here, or, or a spotlight or whatever. It doesn't really matter what kind of light. Anything that's really powerful will work. So you take a, la a lamp and you go out into the habitat where whatever animal you're wanting to find is, and you just shine. Now most of what we find with this method is a lot of tree frogs, a lot of lizards, especially lizards and um, some diurnal species of snakes that, that like to sleep in trees, as well as nocturnal species of snakes that will um, be crawling through the trees looking for squirrels or tree frogs or lizards that are sleeping. Now it's always good to go out and scout the area that you want to shine during the day so you can kind of tell where stuff is and what the habitat looks like because from a, from a spotlight or just a headlamp, you're not gonna be able to tell all that well exactly what's going on or what the habitat looks like. All right, now this tall grass back here, this is a great place to shine because grains will actually bloom. And so all these moths in here are attracted to those little blooms are collecting pollen. And um, in turn, smaller frogs are gonna be all in this. So, oh. All right, you guys can see this frog here. This little guy right here, this is actually a little um, Cuban tree frog. And um, we're actually going to keep him because he's not native, so I have an enclosure for these guys. But that's a totally different um, episode. So you're going to find a lot of tree frogs in places like this. So I'm just going to go through and collect all the invasive tree frogs out of here. Now one really cool thing that I've noticed, especially with the knolls, is that when the dew falls at night on human nights, it'll like beat up all along their, all along their scales. And so they're just kind of like hyper reflective, so they're so easy to spot because they're just like little lizard shaped reflectors sitting among the leaves. And it's just it's so cool to find them like that. So I wanna give you guys kind of an idea of what I've actually found in the past over a longer period of time. So um, one thing I found was a veiled chameleon down in South Florida and I found, we found a few of those. And so um, basically we we're just looking up into trees anywhere between like six feet up to like 30 or 40 feet up into the trees. And that's about the range that we were finding them. And um, that was so cool. Also we found um, rough green snakes just coiled up sleeping in the bushes. That's a really neat find and those are about the same range as far as height goes. And then we found a black racer sleeping way up in a tree and that was that was really neat as well. I mean even though they're pretty common it was pretty cool to see one actually sleeping up in a tree like that. Uh, also we found iguanas and um, those, those I think they tend to be a little bit lower but um, don't hesitate to look up about 20 or 30 feet for those. Also brown basilisks those those are really cool looking lizards and we found a few of those down in south florida and um of course brown anoles green anoles all the anoles we found and those are generally i'd say between like three feet all the way up to 20 or 30 feet we found them but of course they could be even higher now i want to stress that please do not use these methods to collect animals i don't think collecting animals from the wild is a good thing that a lot of people need to be doing. So please be respectful of the nature around you. Don't take animals out of the wild. They belong in the wild. Now the laws about shining are can be strict in some areas of the US and so you want to look up your own local laws to make sure that you're not breaking any laws and you're not going to get in trouble. Now best thing to do if you can't find any resources about shining in your area go talk to some local law enforcement especially the rangers or the game wardens and say, hey, I wanna do this, this, and this at this place at night. Is there gonna be any problems with that? And um, it's best just to talk to them. That way you can get it from, you can get those laws from a primary source and you, you can be confident that the local law enforcement isn't going to harass you about anything you're doing. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned a lot about finding stuff and that you can go out and practice this. Now I wanna stress that please keep things legal and keep them ethical. You are not only representing yourself, but you're representing 
all animal lovers. So if you're going out and doing things that aren't ethical or that are illegal, you're making all of us look bad. So thanks for coming out tonight. And um, this was so much fun. I love doing this. And it's just all the weird things you might find. And remember, go out on warm nights and you're more likely going to find something interesting. So until next time, find a new way to appreciate nature. I've been diving with sharks for 14 years. All kinds of sharks. Yep, even that one. But I'm not here to convince you to like sharks. I'm here to ask questions. This is ABTV. <laughs>